I'd really, really like to build an outlaw car um, because straight gangster, he literally put straight gangster together for literally, um, this is going to blow some of your minds, but literally like $5,000 um, in, actual, in actual money from the scrap pieces from the Home Run Hustler. And guys, if you saw the accident with the Home Run Hustler, the one that we got hit in uh, down in South Carolina, uh, that, was a, that was a pretty bad wreck. And to come up with straight gangster with uh, only $5,000, um, I don't know what the wording is for it, but I like the car that we could come up with. With we had thirty, forty thousand dollars to play with to build a build an outlaw car, and we could come up with some pretty freaking killer. So tomorrow is probably going to be the day that I put it up on the two step. Um, Jeremy's working until two o'clock in the afternoon, so I'll be in the shop by myself in the morning. So I'll probably put the oil heater on this thing in the morning. I'd really like to put it up on the two-step for the first time. But uh, we got the new motor in there. I want to put it on the dyno here soon. Uh, I want to put it on the dyno before we bring it in everywhere, anywhere. Um, the engine assembly went pretty well. Of course, we had a couple of little snags that you saw in the previous videos. But uh, as far as um, it going well, I think it's pretty good. Um, I want to get some different clamps here. It's just for appearance wise, but we got the breather tubes going into the, these are the Cunningham machine, uh, quick release deals here. Um, they work pretty freaking nice. They just pop out like that, then pop back in. And, uh, that's going to make, uh, doing this, cooling the motor down and popping the valve covers off a whole lot nicer. I need to come up with some type of plugs for the front here. I don't want to cut them off and weld them because, um, there might be a time where I need to reuse those and. They're already painted and stuff like that. I hammered and dollied out the whole deal there to make uh, these old valve covers that went through the uh, went through the war uh, look a little bit better. Got the 88s on it. Um, all that stuff is good and set. Um, not too many changes in here. Uh, Re-ran re the uh, breather, uh, the puke tank lines and stuff like that. Uh, nothing too major back here. Back here, uh, this is where the changes happen. Um, I'm not going to tell you about all the changes, but I did make some changes. As you can see, um, it does have the four link bars in it. I'll flop it over to the other side because uh, we got a little bit more light on that side. So um, we went through and uh, it does have the four link setup in it right now. Um, these are used tubes, of course. They are whatever. It is what it is, right? No big deal. Uh, but we did go through and make these pieces and machined all those up. Um, that might be in this video, might be in the previous video. I went through there and added some additional bust bars and gussets down there uh, to strengthen up, uh, tie these bars in. But these bars are tied into the main chassis. Um, I took all the wiring out of the car, cleaned it all up. Um, I handled it quite a bit, so it's all dirty again. But this is that excess power. It's a pretty lightweight battery cable, but pretty good stuff. Um, we do have the 16 volt system in there right now. Um, but we went through, sanded down the whole chassis because that stuff was just completely bare. So sanded it all down and, uh, went through and, uh, put a clear coat over all this stuff because I don't like painting my own stuff because, um, let's be honest, straight gangster here is, um, uh, ever evolving project, I guess you could say. But I did some other changes to the chassis and stuff like that. But I'm not going to show you those, guys. Um, I can't show you everything. Since it was my birthday, I was able to convince Lady Gangster and MVP to come out and help sand down the chassis. I never put a clear coat on it, so it was starting to get a little bit of surface rust on it. And I just didn't like the way it looked. But yeah, we went through. These are just zip tied in here. There are better ways to do it. But like I said, Straight Gangster isn't a real a full tube chassis car. Otherwise, we'd have lines going all the way to the front of the car. And this tube would not be existing because... All this crap would be running through the frame rails. But we don't have a frame rail that runs all the way from the front of the car to the back of the car to the puke tank back here. And uh, I've talked about the puke tank previously. Um, and inside this puke tank here is a breather tank, essentially, right? And these are the things that we have in there. Um, just these little scrubby pads, right? But I put, bring them apart and I expand them so that down here, um, it just helps uh, coagulate any uh, oil or whatever, because you don't want to have any of that stuff coming out. So basically, it's just it's just moisture and stuff like that that comes out of the tank. But the tank has to be a pretty decent size because if uh, if the motor spits its guts, these things are going to fill up with um, oil, and uh, you got to make sure there's enough real estate there that the tank doesn't overflow. 
But yeah, like I said, guys, these are the headers that were banged up in the accident. I built these for the Dirty 30, and I saw some stuff on the internet recent, recently. Why are the turbos back there? Well, the turbos are back here. Um, initially, oh, basically, I like the short pipes. The short pipes have an advantage. Um, placement to get the valve covers on and off is a little bit easier. Uh, the intake is facing backwards because the turbos are in the back, and I don't want to have tubes running back here like I did on the Dirty 30, but the Dirty 30 had a taller firewall, so I couldn't have a throttle body on the front side. So um, I actually had to run it back here and bring them back around. And it made it a little bit more difficult. But yeah, um, I'd like to go through and redo the fuel cell and make it a little bit sleeker and stuff like that. But I really, really want to build an outlaw car. I really, really like to build an outlaw car um, because straight gangster, we literally put straight gangster together for literally, um, this is going to blow some of your minds, but literally like $5,000. An actual, an actual money from the scrap pieces from the homegrown hustler. And guys, if you saw the accident with the homegrown hustler, the one that we got hit in uh, down in South Carolina, uh, that was a pretty bad wreck. Like the car that we could come up with, with we had thirty, forty thousand dollars to play with to build a build an outlaw car, and we could come up with something pretty, like, pretty freaking killer. But um, I'm I'm trying to make something happen here to like, so I have the uh, have the coin to you know or the sponsorship to build an outlaw car because I'd really that's one thing I really want to do I want to see um I want to know what I'm capable of right and like uh I don't want to wait too long to be able to do that you know a I got my health issues b I got a daughter that's growing older every day she's only a year old now but you know there's there's all these other factors that come in and like it's something that uh, I'd really like to do so I, I'm in the next year I'd like to build an outlaw car I'd like to do it sooner than that but if I could, if I could, in, if I could come out in 2025 and uh, build a outlaw small tire car, um, I that that'd be pretty cool. But with how evolving the sport is, I'd like to do it sooner than that, because uh, otherwise you're just playing catch up as you're building the car. Everyone else is spending more money as you're, you know, scraping up pennies and busting your butt. But yeah, so here it is, guys. Um, still has a radiator in it. Still has a massive training cooler in it because. Uh, some TV star burnt us down and uh, cost me a lot of money when I burnt up my transmission, being on the trans brake for like entirely, entirely way too long. But that's a whole nother story. So yeah, we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get straight gangster to get here. We appreciate the people that uh, support this and uh, guys, you you people right here um, are our number one supporters. We don't make a lot of money through um, YouTube itself, but the people that buy. Uh, those of you that buy merchandise and stuff like that, you guys are greatly appreciated. You guys are uh, what are keeping this journey together along with a whole bunch of sacrifice and determination and a whole lot of hustle. So, guys, we appreciate it. Um, we'll keep you guys updated. Let me know what you want to see. I got to go and do an airbag in the uh, toter home tomorrow. It's going to be like 30 degrees out. I'm going to have fun. That's going to be a fun experience. But, you know, got to make it happen. YouTube superstar stuff. Hang out, follow along. It's gonna be 2024. I have a, I have high hopes for 2024. We're gonna, we're gonna see what it brings. Appreciate it, guys. See you soon. So, guys, I don't know what time it is, and that's probably a good thing because it's, uh, it's pretty freaking late here. But, um, warmed up the car a few times, put it on the brake, and I was a little bit lazy on the brake. But, uh, I figured, you know, to go through and check the valves and stuff like that because we didn't check them uh, after, after a couple of heat cycles and stuff like that, and. Uh, once you really set them and get the style stud girdle on there, uh, this stud girdle isn't necessarily uh, the best uh, the best out there. Um, a shaft mount system is a much, much, um, it's a much more robust, much more serviceable, and uh, a lot better valve train geometry with a shaft mount rocker system where um, there's a solid stand that goes through here. And these guys aren't mounted off of uh, just single studs here. So when you put this uh, this type of stud girdle on here that ties them all together and adds a lot of strength to it, um, they move around a little bit. So uh, we had a couple valves that were slightly off, but I went through and set them all and uh, kind of wish I had some more fuel in it because uh, I'd put the thing up on the brake right now and it would probably sound pretty dang good. But we had a couple valves that were a little bit loose and whoo she sounds good. So Maybe we'll get to the dyno here before too long, but uh, I don't know when this video is going to drop in with all the rest of them. But yeah, there's uh, there's been a lot going on here uh, with multiple different things here. 
So uh, we're gonna toss a bell cord back on this sucker and uh, see what we can get going here. These Cunningham machine, uh, those quick releases are pretty dang nice. I might have to come up with a little holder set up here for them since uh, we are running some, you know, low budget, uh, just regular inch and a quarter hose here going to the puke tank in the back. But um, as you can see, we've ran this car for probably a total of 20 minutes or so. And there's, there's a little bit of milkiness in the oil right now. Um, but uh, I didn't run the vacuum right now after we just ran it for, I don't know, four or five minutes or so. And it is pretty dang nasty in here. Like, it's, uh, methanol fumes are, uh, there's something special. So I want to bolt this thing, put this sucker back together so, uh, it's ready to go in the trailer tomorrow. Hey guys, if you're interested in supporting the channel, go to hustlinghorsepower.com and get you some merchandise. The hoodies are going to be restocked here sometime next week.